The most exciting new feature in Black Square's Dukes for Microsoft Flight Simulator is the tablet interface. The tablet is hidden between the pilot's seat and the cabin wall, just like the control locks are hidden between the co-pilot's seat and the cabin wall. Clicking on the tablet will show it in a default position. Dragging the bezel allows you to move the tablet around the cockpit so that it's always handy and next to whatever controls you're currently manipulating. To hide the tablet, click next to the pilot seat where you found it. The tablet screen can also be popped out and moved onto a physical tablet, either to have on your desk or in your home cockpit. The first page in the tablet interface are the persistent options. These are all saved and restored next time you load the aircraft. At the top of the page, we have your avionics selection. This aircraft has 12 possible combinations to choose from, which can be changed at any time during the flight. There are several new options available with this aircraft, including the KLN-90B Vintage GPS and the GTN 650s. Once you've selected the avionics of your choosing, press the Confirm button. The buttons will be grayed out momentarily as the software changes the avionics in the background. You can use the toggle switch to select between providers of your GTN software, either the freeware or premium PMS50 or the payware TDS. At the bottom of the page are more persistent options, such as whether the aircraft loads with covers and chocks in place, or whether you can see your co-pilot passenger from inside the cabin. The second page in the tablet interface is the optional payload screen. It's optional because you can always use the native payload planner accessible from the simulator menu or any third-party payload application. In the upper left-hand corner, we have totals and estimates for the aircraft's payload. Some of these lines may turn red as limits are exceeded. By clicking in the center of each payload block, you can render it either empty or filled with the default payload which can then be adjusted with the arrow buttons. The quantity of fuel can also be adjusted with the arrow buttons on the fuel tank blocks. The color indicates the type of fuel in the tank. In the bottom left-hand corner are toggle switches, which control functional exterior elements like wheel chocks or the new propane engine heater. These will be discussed in a future video. In the bottom right-hand corner is a graphical depiction of the aircraft's center of gravity and limits. When the center of gravity exceeds the limits, the crosshair will turn red. The next page is one of the engine visualizers. This one, the left engine of the reciprocating engine aircraft. We can still repair the engine and monitor its condition, but everything else on this page was previously invisible in other Black Square aircraft, even if it was being simulated. I want to show you some of the graphics in motion just by engaging the starter motor. The starter gear contacts the flywheel, turning the crankshaft, moving the pistons up and down in each cylinder. The valves open and close in time with the camshafts, and the magneto impulse couplings snap the wipers from each contact to the next. An orchestrated dance of man and machine made a feast for your eyes to enjoy. There's far too much detail to go over in this video, but we'll come back to it in another one soon. Next up is the Live Schematic page. This may look familiar because the iconography is the same as the schematics in the Black Square manuals, except this one is live, meaning that you can see which systems and buses are powered as you bring up the aircraft. Inactive systems are grayed out, failed ones are red, and when circuit breakers trip, their red collars are visible. This can be very useful when diagnosing electrical failures in complex aircraft and trying to bring systems back online with an increased risk of electrical fire or cascading system failures. In a first for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the next page is a complete depiction of the temperature and pressurization systems in the aircraft. Again, there are too many details on the screen to go through right now, but you might notice the ventilation fans, the Avgas-powered combustion air heater, the vapor cycle cooling system with its evaporator, condenser, and compressor, the turbochargers and their intercoolers, and the pressurization, outflow, and safety valves. At the bottom left of the screen is a vertical graph 
depicting the difference between the aircraft's pressure altitude and the cabin's pressurization altitude. At the bottom right is a pulse oximeter, which many pilots use to measure the saturation of oxygen in their bloodstreams so they know when they're susceptible to the symptoms of hypoxia. In a black square aircraft, every component on this page can fail, some in multiple different ways, and each will give some visual indication of its failure so you can learn to troubleshoot and identify the secondary effects of equipment failure. Finally, we've arrived at the failures page, a complete redesign of what was once available on the weather radar display in previous black square aircraft, with some new added features. We can still adjust the global failure rate from off to 1000 times real time. This is a multiplier applied to the mean time between failure of each component in the aircraft. This is a service-based time interval, as often as possible, pulled from NASA reports on equipment failure in light aircraft. The mean time between failure of each component can be adjusted with the arrow buttons below. Clicking on the mean time between failure will restore it to the default. You can also click Fail Now to generate a failure immediately. The color coding in this list is the same as it was for previous Black Square aircraft. Magenta is for catastrophic engine failures. Red is for major system failures. White for power distribution failures and cyan for individual circuit breaker protected overcurrent failures. When the system cues a failure, there's no immediate indication unless the component is in use, such as current flowing through a circuit breaker to generate heat. This means you can go an entire flight without noticing a new failure just because you didn't need the component, such as navigation lights on a daytime VFR flight. This leaves you to discover the failure on your next flight, giving real purpose to your pre-flight checklist and before takeoff run-up. There's also scheduled failure mode, which allows you to create a guaranteed time window in which a specific failure is guaranteed to occur. This way you can create cascading failures throughout a flight or test specific scenarios. The entire failure list is also now searchable via keyboard entry which is really useful considering that some Black Square aircraft have over 200 failures to keep you on your toes. The failure system is also accessible via third-party interfaces and instructor stations in case you want to have someone else test your skills while you focus on flying the aircraft. Remember, the most realistic part of the new tablet interface is that it's just as distracting as a real tablet or smartphone in the cockpit. For more information on the systems we previewed in this video, stay tuned for more technical videos on the upcoming Black Square Dukes for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.